So this is all for Power BI that I've just done. Um, I, again, because automation is not specific to any report or schedule type, um, I'm going to go ahead and go through these, but with the PBIRS or SSRS type reports. Um, but prior to doing so, I do want to take a quick break here to show you the system monitor because the system monitor is a great way to get an overview of what's happening or going on with your schedules. So my scheduler is currently turned off. So you'll notice here I have a list of reports that are ready to run, some that were supposed to run earlier this morning and some that are running later in the day. Anything currently executing will show here. Um, and I do have a refresh interval. Um, you may want to hold it a little bit, um, 60 seconds, if you don't need it to refresh that often. But you can also filter um, this list um, if you need to only see something, um, schedules that need to run within the next five minutes or the next hour. You have your email log. So if you're using the SMTP setup, by default, it is set to 30 days, but I have mine set to 120 days. It will keep a copy of all of the reports that have been sent out from uh, PBRS. If you have Outlook on the machine, you can simply double click on this, and I'm not sure if Outlook was configured on this machine or not. Um, I am attempting to open one, but it will um, pretty much pull up in the email format um, the actual email and report that was sent. Now, again, we do keep EML copies in these locations, so you can actually grab it, the copy of the EML file should you want to see that. So you'll notice here I've got my Welcome to Outlook that is not set up, so I will just go ahead and exit out of it. You do have your email queue, so any emails that you have um, for whatever reason that did not go out, maybe your mail server was down for a short period of time, if there is anything queued up, that need, um, they would be showing here. Your error log. Any reports, again, or errors that happen within the software will show here. I do have mine set to keep for every 60 days. And these are the errors. So an example, I've got a report that failed. It could not find a specific location. These are the errors that are going to get sent based on the set up under your error handling. So this is why this is important because whoever needs to monitor the reports and if they fail, the email address or if you prefer to send a text message should be set up there. Uh, we do have the deferred delivery. So in the email destination, um, if you're deferring the delivery, you ran the report at 3 a.m. but you don't want to send it till 8 a.m. Um, the deferred delivery emails will be shown here. You also have your red receipt options as well. The red receipt options are, and I let me pull this up here. So the red receipts here, you'll see if you have the red receipt set up, um, there's a lot of different factors that have to play into it. You know, the Outlook client, their email has to have the option enabled or turned on. Your mail server SMTP has to be configured to allow or to be able to configure the red receipt options, but it, it will pull through here. Um, I did skip over the scheduled backup. This is just backing up the PBRS software at, on a scheduled time frame. Highly recommended to do and to set it to a shared network location, not locally, because if something happens to that machine itself, there goes your backups as well. You've got your history view. Um, so if you want to easily see a history of your schedules, uh, select the schedule type, whether it's event-based, a package schedule, um, and you can easily just click through. Now, all of these here are disabled, but the ones that are enabled here, you can see the history. And this is where the default setting is. So um, here I have it set to 30. The default is 14 days, but you can change that as you'd like. 
anything that is currently retrying, if it's failed, will show up here. It is very rare that you will see anything in here because the retry, if you leave it at the default, is set to immediately retry. Um, so again, typically this is fairly empty. All right, so that is the system monitor. I'm going to go ahead here. You'll notice your, I, we call it the smart folders, which we I have a couple set up here. So just to show you the wizard of a smart folder, I'm actually going to select enabled schedule since I've done one for disabled. I have the ability here to basically um, determine what do, what am I looking for. So I want to see, and I'm only going to have one, so it doesn't matter if I select any or all, but I need to be able to see all of my schedules. And you'll notice here I've got folder name, frequency, keyword, message, next run, RDL path, which if you're using um, uh, P PBIRS or SQL Server reporting services, that would apply to you. You'll notice we have the SSRS server listed here as well. But I've got status, and status is status of the schedule. Um, and you only have two options, whether it's enabled or disabled. And yes, we do have the zero or one. So I've already got disabled, so I want to have an easy view of all of my enabled schedules. I'm going to hit next and then finish. So what that does is give me my enabled schedules. This will have to reel through all of my folders, subfolders, and files um, to populate it. Um, but there it is, an easy view. And I can go ahead here using the style and see a detailed view of all of my enabled schedules when they last ran um, and the last result, how often it runs. Now, can you change this up, add or remove any options? Yes. Under select details, this is where you can select, okay, I need to see the repeat interval because most of mine do repeat. Maybe you want to see who the owner of that schedule is. So these are the options that you can select. And when I save that, it will refresh my, what I would call my desktop or home screen for me. So what I'd like to go ahead and get in through here is uh, we, we've seen the address book where you can add a new contact, uh, add a new group. So I do have groups as well. You can use these in the email destinations typically. Um, and you can also import and export the address books as well. Um, when you are importing, there are um, certain file types that need to be used, but we do have uh, the ability to do that. Data items, um, what are they? Uh, sometimes there's a very specific query or group list uh, predefined that you need to be able to use, whether it's in a, uh, a filter, a parameter, an email, um, you can specify that here. Uh, for example, let's say there's a very specific date that you need to use, 14 days you know, or, or two weeks minus three days. And, and maybe we don't have an insert that you like to use or you've already got a query preset up to grab these specific dates for you. You can add here, and I will say specific date, and select where this, uh, where or what you're monitoring for. Um, in my case, this, this will not matter too much here. And I can do, because I would like to have a number form, I'm just going to select postal code, but I'm going to hit parse and hit no and hit OK. So I've basically got this query where I need to select something distinct. If there's something specific you need to be able to create that doesn't make sense using our constants, um, you can run that query using a data item. Um, again, you will have options here to allow multiple values to be returned. Um, if you, we do that, how do we separate the values? Uh, do we need to replace val uh, null values with a, a default value? And then 
if no records found, then return the default value of, and you can specify that as well. I'm gonna hit okay here. Uh, user constants, I'm gonna go ahead and click on add here. You can create a, what we would call a definition or formula. Uh, if you have a specific function that's very specific, you can add it in here and test it. Um, so we do need to verify that your definition formula is accurate before being able to save it. These are not used as often as the data items. Um, data items um, typically take care of any special needs that you may have as far as uh, queries go. I've shown the integrations. Um, theme, this is just pretty much the color of the software. So I've got it at a bright uh, Power BI yellow, if you want to call it that. Um, but you have these different options here. For this style, you've got the details, which is what I was showing previously. And then you do have the ability for tiles, which was without these details. And then you can select what details you want to be able to show as far as the for each of the schedules. Refreshing will refresh this screen here. So let's say this has already reran and it was successful. If I refresh it, it should say success. You do have your full system search, which you can turn on and off, and then the uh, current local date and time based on the machine. I'm going to go ahead and move over to the system. So you have your system monitor, which we were easily able to open here. Collaboration, that is again, if you have multiple machines working together, um, you've got a backup or a failover scheduler um, on that second machine that you wanna use as a backup. This is where we would connect the two together. You do have the user manager, and this is a great tool, especially if you've got multiple users who need to use the system and you want to be able to lock them down as far as permissions wise, you can do so. Um, we do have the ability to um, enable uh, what I would call AD authentication, but Windows integrated authentication here. So you'll notice um, based on the account I am logged in as, I've got um, the domain here, but I can add, select the domain name, it will then generate, which will take a second, especially because I'm on a demo server, but it'll pull up all the group names on our domain. And then I can determine uh, what user, or if I need to add the entire group, and what security role they should have. Now, I can then also assign specific schedules, or under groups, if I've got my users group, which I have here, I'm gonna edit, I have a list of all the permissions that they will or will not have access to. So by default, it is okay, they have access to nothing. So I need to give them permissions. Maybe folder management, maybe you want to allow them to access other group member schedules um, if they're in the same group. All of these different options, they shouldn't or should not be able to delete a schedule. Maybe you want to restrict the users to a specific destination type. Maybe it's only email. Maybe you create one that you've already created. So I've created this email destination exactly how it is. That is the only one that they should be able to use. So now I've just assigned that specific destination to them. Blackout times. When should a group not be allowed to schedule reports? This goes back to the uh, um, operational hours or again, blackout time, 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. The database is being backed up. They should not be able to uh, schedule during that time frame. I can go in here and add in, you know, Monday through Friday, uh, 12 a.m. and then specify 2 a.m. I'm gonna just hit okay here and say um, midnight to 2 a.m. Now, obviously I didn't do the 2 a.m. on the setting, um, but that is okay. Custom tasks, we have the allow only certain custom tasks options. You'll notice we don't have every single 
custom task, but instead we do the uh, group custom task. So all of those files and folder, you know, manipulating or merging PDF and Excel documents, moving files and folders around, um, they won't or will have the option to do all of that just depending on. You do not want your users to have any access to any of the database custom tasks, you know, updating, deleting um, a, a record, running a SQL script or stored procedure. Uh, same with the registry items. You can simply leave those unchecked so that they do not have access to those. They should only have access maybe to the general or maybe just the files and folder options. Lastly, you've got your folders. So should you want to group out your users, I mentioned in the beginning of the demo, some customers like to possibly use these folders as their departments. So you've got accounting, sales, maybe you have your executive level reports, and your users should not have access to see those reports. You can specify they should only have access to you know, maybe the SSRS reports or the SSRS folder. So any schedules in that folder, that's what they have access to. They won't have access to any of these other ones. You can do that. So there are a lot of different options as far as uh, limiting the uh, security rights or permissions uh, for groups that you've added in. Um, and then, of course, you've got your uh, integrated authentication for um, AD. Uh, or Windows integrated authentication should you want to be able to use that as well. SMTP servers, uh, many companies may have multiple uh, mail servers. You can add in your backup servers here and use them as a backup should the main uh, mail server fail over. So you can, again, add in as many as you would like here. The same setup and options as under the main configuration screen is listed. Export schedules. Again, if you are using uh, multiple installations uh, that are, in this case, for exporting schedules, they do not have to be connected together. But as long as you are bringing the, uh, the shared folders, there are certain folders that need to be shared out, I can go in here and specify I want to bring over that schedule. I do need to have an ODBC connection set up to the other scheduler uh, or PBR software, specifically the database, because it will drop in the saved details in using the, the database. So that's how you would do this. In my case, I could, I could select this and attempt to connect to it. Of course, mine will not have access because it's not the right database formatting that it's looking for. Operation hours, um, you know, doesn't stop anything, but if you have your operational hours and then you have your exclusion set, which mine are showing here, um, easily view of that. Your backup, so if you want to manually backup the software, um, you can do so clicking backup. It does take just a few seconds. I'll actually put this on the desktop here just so you can see how quick it is. And this backup, if anything should happen, um, you have all of your schedules and setup saved as long as, again, it, you, it's accessible. Um, software, install it, and we can restore that backup within just a few minutes. And we would use that restore button. Moving on to the resources tab, we have the about PBRS screen. Um, so this shows you your license information, uh, what version of the software you have. Your help center, um, browse the knowledge base. These all will bring you to our Christian Stephen knowledge base. Checking for updates. By default, it is set to uh, automatically check for the updates. So when the software opens, it will do that for you. And if there is an update, it will pop up and provide you with the details of that. Support files, should you ever work with support, um, at, from time to time they may request for you to create and generate and send support files through. All you're doing is selecting a location where you want those uh, support files saved to. You can encrypt them if you would like. Um, the way that these are sent over, they're already through a secure um, on our website, so, or if you're sending it via an email. 
and um, you have some additional options, you know, email log, schedule history. If there's any information that you don't want to be included, uh, you can leave them out. But again, support will work with you to, um, to know what options you need to select. Christian Stevens Software. Bigger data, better business.